Hey guys, it's Brad again. Um, so yesterday I put out a video where I just sort of went over my uh, daily routine in the morning and uh, yeah, just sort of went over what I look for, how I do it, um, how I have my charts, uh, my thought process, all that stuff. Um, it was pretty good, uh, but there's a couple things I missed. Um, so I wanted to do another one and uh, just do the same thing again um, for today or for tomorrow, I guess, set up for tomorrow. Um, it is Monday night right now. So we'll do the same routine, set up for tomorrow's trading session. Um, I think I'm also gonna just sort of build this step into my routine. Um, I really liked the process of creating a video and then, you know, I could rewatch it and see my thought process. You know, I, I'm usually doing this in the morning and I'm just sort of, you know, like having my coffee, um, getting started for the day, looking at the chart, um, marking things out. But, you know, there's another level that I think could be helpful when you're speaking out loud and then you sort of analyze it afterwards. So we'll see if it's, uh, you know, helpful. Um, but I definitely want to start putting out some more videos whether it's these chart layout setups or <clears throat> maybe some tips and tricks that I like uh, in trading view. Um, probably put something out like that as well. Uh, I don't think I'm to the point where I'm like analyzing the day, uh, but you know, maybe one day. Uh, either way, let's jump in here. So we have my trading view layout that I like um, and a couple things I'm gonna go through this time um, just a couple more details of my trading view setup um, so one question I got was how to set up this double chart layout that I like to use um, I like it because I can have the one minute and I can have another time frame usually the five minute uh, on the screen right in front of me at all times throughout the day. Um, so to set that up, you go up here to this box, now uh, top right. Now if you have just the normal layout, it will just look like a square. And mine, you see it's got the two. So you, know, you can set this up however you like. Um, two charts side by side or you know on top of each other or whatever I even go all the way up to eight charts in one browser window <coughs> which seems insane um, you do need some of the paid versions I think mine the the two chart you need the first paid version which I believe is $15 a month um, once again, I said this yesterday, if you're taking this seriously, it's $15 a month. Like, that's nothing compared to the amount of money that you're going to be trading um, throughout the month. So just add that as part of your investment, part of your tuition and learning how to be a successful day trader, in my opinion. Um, this is the best tool out there, right? So uh, the paid features, there's a couple features and this being one of them that I think is worth it. Um, there's also, you know, you get more indicators and stuff like that. Um, not really that interested in that, but um, yeah, the paid version is nice. Uh, next, I wanna look at uh, the different time frames. I did mention this yesterday, but I just want to reiterate it. Um, make sure the time frames that you care to cycle through, you have starred, right? So you click on that little arrow, you hit the star next to whatever time frame you want. Let's say you want to start doing 30 minutes, and there it is, it's in the bar there. So um, that's very helpful 
Um, another thing I didn't go over in the last video, this little toolbar, right? This is very uh, helpful and you should take advantage of the little favorites toolbar. You have all your tools over here on the left, right? But there's only a couple you really should be using, especially in the middle of the trading day. Um, I have some on here that I never use, but uh, the main ones, you know, horizontal lines, horizontal rays, fib, rectangle. It's pretty much what I use. Vertical line can be helpful if you want to like segment time. So you want to put some lines like at 930 open or something. It's it's an easy way to to see maybe everything to the left you don't care about as much or whatever. Something like that. So to get tools onto this bar, what you do is you go over to the left and it's the same as the time frame thing. They have these little stars. You hit the star and it shows up on the bar. So get that set up. It will be very helpful throughout the trading day. So you can just pop on targets and stuff like that. It's usually what I'm doing. Pop it on targets, um, drawing gaps, pretty much the extent of what I'm doing throughout the day. But, you know, I'm looking around and um, I can do that really quick with the favorites and just knowing trading view and how it works. Um, I didn't go over my indicators. Um, I forgot to do that last video, so I wanted to hit on that as well. I use volume. Um, I think everyone uses volume, right? Um, it's important, I think. It can help you figure out why something is moving differently, maybe. Um, for the theory that I work with, it's not like super crazy important, but it's a cool thing to see. I mean, it can just give you a better idea of why something's happening. Um, the only other indicator I use is this FVG one. It's a fair value gap. And make sure you get this one that has this made by this guy, Nephew Sam. Um, it's very good. So you would have noticed if you saw yesterday when I cleared all my drawings, I still have all these little boxes up. That's the indicator. That's not my drawing. So I have on the five minute side settings, I have the 15 minute gaps always shown. I want to be aware of those. And then I have the chart gaps, right? So I'm not always in five minute, but, um, generally I am so that will give me the five minute gaps and the 15 minute gaps um, if I'm in some other time frame I want to see those gaps too so I will by having the chart gaps um, on the one minute side which I'm pretty much always keep on one minute I have five minute gap 15 minute gaps turned on and chart gaps so the one minute gaps um, so those will always be there like I said, throughout the day, five minute, 15 minute gaps are really important to know where they are. Um, with the indicator, they're always gonna show you don't have to worry about drawing them out. For other time frames, <coughs> we'll draw them out. And that's part of the daily routine. So uh, yeah, we can start going through that once again today uh, so oh and I think I fixed my mic <laughs> let me know if it sounds a little better added a little bit of gain uh, so hopefully you don't hear background noise and crap but should be better all right so starting out as always we remove drawings uh, I have all this crap that I put out there throughout the day I want to start fresh so we remove drawings so now I am clean, except for my fair value gap indicators, which are great. And we're going to be using those to draw out our boxes. So we'll start with the daily. 
Um, the daily, my normal routine was previous day, actually this is previous day, high, right? And I went over templates yesterday, but I'll go over real quick again. Now you see I clicked on a horizontal line, use control to snap it to the wick, and you click it on. And then you go, you make your style, however you want it. Hit save as on the template part, and that will save your template forever. So I have all my templates saved. So usually I go previous high day with the wick, it matters, it's very important. Uh, so we have a template for that, high day. And then previous low of day. Now, oh, sorry, that was sell side liquidity. Um, ICT put a video out today. And I think I'm going to be changing up my routine a little bit because of the things that he pointed out in his video. Um, he mentioned a lot of targets based on previous day uh, points of interest that happened today, right? Um, I was able to get a lot of those targets from other areas, but mine were not as accurate as his. And I didn't have them starting out. I had to search around for some targets. So um, I sort of analyzed the difference and decided I probably should do something uh, a little different with my daily candle chart setup. Um, probably should start thinking about other candle uh, points. So we can start doing that here, right? So what I really want to think about is what other points of previous candle, like I could just go through and pick high and low of, you know, the last five days or something, right? That would you know, they'll, they'll either be like super relevant or, um, you know, they might be helpful. I think that might be a waste of time and I might be better served trying to just think of which ones would be significant uh, in the next day. I mean, it's a sort of the same thought process that I have when I'm going through the other time frames and marking gaps. I don't just mark the gaps that are there, you know, like every gap. I try to mark the ones that I think are going to be significant for the upcoming trading day. Um, so let's think of what would be significant here other than the previous high day and previous low of day. Um, this is going to be a good exercise because I don't know right off the top of my head um, one thing he pointed out was I believe the top of this candle here this is Tuesday the 13th of December as a I believe he said a breaker uh, a bearish breaker something like that I don't know if that's really true but um, he noted that as a point of significance, right? A point that if we were to go up, which he predicted, interesting, um, that top of the candle body was something he wanted to be aware of as a, as a place that price could gravitate towards. It's pretty interesting. Now we've we've hit that. So is that significant anymore? I don't think so. Um, I think we should probably consider some upside targets. Um, the way this ca these candles are looking right now, 
I mean, we have this gap, right? We had uh, we had this big drawdown. We came up. Uh, we didn't really like pff, come up. We came here and then pff, shot up, right? Huge gap. Um, did some back and forth. Probably reacted off of this, right? This gap back down definitely here strong reaction back down now we're heading back up right in this little section that we headed back up we created a fair value gap we came back into it bounced up came back into it again and we're bouncing up again so if this was like the five minute chart, what would I think would happen next? Um, yeah, I mean, it's so hard because I feel like everything on the daily chart has way more significance than anything on the, s the lower chart. So it's like, oh, this candle body, we just, we just took it out, so should we come back into this gap maybe a little bit? Maybe. This is also, well, I would say this is the order block, yeah. We took off, order block, sort of a weird one because it's just a little tiny red there and a candle that shot up. Um, Huh, we came back down, uh, are we gonna come back? It doesn't really matter. Um, let me pick a high side target, a couple more high side targets. So what I'm gonna do for another high side target, I know for sure that this would be a high side target. Right? I, wanna, I wanna take a fib and I wanna go on that wick, right? That is definitely something that's going to be a high side target at some point. The 50% mark of that wick. And you'll notice my fib I just set to do um, 0.5, 1, 1.5, etc. So I can get, I, I really only care about the 50% mark. So that is 4.11775. So let's take a ray and let's put it right there. Now we can edit this ray. Coordinates 4117.75, right? Um, and I think the template we want to use is BSL. It's going to be a target. We can delete the fib now. So that's going to be a target. I think the top of that wick is going to be a target. Um, the bodies are no longer a target, I don't think. And then if we're saying that we could potentially go down here to shoot off again, we got a couple fair value gaps. I don't know how likely that is, but we should probably, uh, honestly, we don't really need a target for that though, because we have the fair value gap. Um, I'm not gonna mark this one because this one's gonna change, right? Like this is the fair value gap from today's candle. So any movement here like this one could literally just close it all up and then there's no gap and there never was right until this candle closes this fair value gap is just a guess of what it could be right like what it is at that moment in time but doesn't mean it's going to stay there so let's take a horizontal ray and let's put it on the high of the previous day right two days ago and let's say that's gonna be a sell side target 
I believe that's correct. This gap is good. We formed it today. So we're good to mark that. So let's go ahead and put a rectangle and let's mark that as a one day fair value gap. Um, we want to go back to this one again. We clear our chart every day. So we don't have this anymore. We had it. We've had it for a while. We still want to see it. Do we get all the way back down there? Very doubtful. But if we do, we want to see that gap. <coughs> um, speaking of getting all the way down there, let's put a sell side target on that wick. Um, and I believe ICT would do something where he cuts the candle in half and puts a target. I'm not going to do that yet. Not convinced that is necessary. Um, we could do some stuff with these two. We're going to move on. Uh, I'm going to keep playing around with that and see, you know, am I missing targets? Is, are, are there targets? that I haven't charted out in my prep work that I get to during the day. I, ideally, I want all targets laid out the next day. Obviously, we're gonna have some pre-market. That's gonna create some targets too, but I want as many as I can in this prep session. Uh, so we'll go down to the four hour chart and we will do the same thing. So four hour chart, we have that daily gap there, we have the daily gap there, we have some gaps in the four hour. We have previous low of day right there, so we don't need to mark that wick. Also, top of the gap makes sense, right? Previous low of day is gonna be top of the gap. Um, but let's mark some of these gaps here. Getting a little muddied up with these gaps but I mean now we have this huge one day gap and then we're going to be stacking four hour gap and I guarantee you we're going to have like a one hour gap the 15 minute gap blah 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 and so on um, let's mark these and all of the stacking just makes it in my opinion, a little more significant, right? This one might not be significant, but let's mark it. We're muddying up the chart a little bit. <coughs> okay. Um, 40.35 is what we're trading at now, so we don't have any of these marked out. Um, this we don't need to care about because it's top of gap, top of gap. We have a sell side target here. Interesting. Um, we probably should look for buy side targets. Oh, here we go. I believe this is something I didn't really catch yesterday four hour gap there. Um, we are trading, well, we traded into it today, but then we left. Um, some of these other ones, I'm not gonna mark them out right at the moment. I think we're good on the four hour for now. There's another like huge target way up there. Let's mark it just, you know, for fun. buy side okay so we're done with the four hour let's go to the one hour once again we have some gaps let's put those in there a lot of times I just use the gaps like the same size as the uh, the indicator this gap is very significant I think um, just because it's right at the end of a little consolidation period, right? 
And this was pre-market today. Um, and ICT pointed this out too. Uh, you should catch this video if you haven't. This was, uh, he was expecting a, a lot more movement, uh, but you had a little breaker actually that happened today. Uh, but it was very, it was technically a breaker, but it didn't look too crazy, right? Like it barely took the sell side. Um, but he declared it a breaker, so you know, I gotta go with the man who created all these terms. Um, so yeah, we did see a breaker today. Um, now you see, we came up, came back down. This was, this is the hour candles. That coming back down to the gap was open. We opened 9.30 and came back down to that gap and then shot off in a crazy run before lunch. Um, had some consolidation and then had that little drop and then, you know, got to a balanced price point. Anyway, um, we have this, wait, we're actually trading like right on that. I was like, man, we have this already marked. Um, we're trading right on that. I'm not going to mark it. Cutting candles is a thing. I just don't do it right now. I think I want to focus on like more recent stuff. Um, and actually I put a horizontal array there, but that's the bottom of the gap. So it's not something I need to put something else on. Uh, we'll put a sell side target there. That's something to look out for previous high days, that one. So I think we're okay on this. Um, let's mark the gap actually. We have this gap just sort of chilling right above us. So we wanna make sure we watch as it's tapping. You see this on the one minute here. Uh, that's where we tapped. You know, if you were in chat with me, <coughs> we were looking right at towards close for it to come and like take, there was another upside target that I thought it might pop and hit right before close. Um, it actually ended up tapping this one hour gap uh, and shooting back down. So that's interesting. I didn't have it marked out. Um, well, that's because it happened during the day, right? Just another little reminder, like I should probably be doing more of this during the day too, because uh, it would it would have been nice to know about that gap and mark it out. Um, and another thing I need to get a little uh, better at is marking the gaps as they come up because when they close, the indicator closes them. And you can change that. It's a setting in here. Um, but let's delete boxes after fill. The problem with not having that, when you turn that off, you just see <laughs> gaps everywhere and most of them don't mean anything so um, I have it off but any significant gaps even if they close like this five minute one this one actually oh wait I'm on the one minute chart sorry um, if that were to close I think I might still want to see it so I need to get a little better at that marking those out throughout the day so I could still keep track of them now we have a ton of one hour gaps here. <sighs> I just really don't wanna put the gaps in there because it's gonna be so messy and unreadable. Like what's the point, right? Um, I'm gonna put a couple, you know, another thing you could sort of do, this is the same run up and we have very little drawdown. Um, I mean, you could just, uh, you could just mark different candle lows or something, or wick lows, I mean. Um, there are a couple that are significant though. This one is very significant to me. Mm 
because it it shot the run off, right? It did go right under it, but we shot off, we came back, the fair value gap that we came back into before we continued with a strong run. I mean, I think that's pretty significant. We also have this one down at the bottom, which started the initial run. That's pretty significant too. Um, I know I'm getting very wordy on this video, and I'm sorry. Uh, I'll work at doing, <laughs> doing this a little quicker in the future and still talking through my process, but uh, you're gonna have to just deal with it for now, huh? All right, let's go to the 15 minute. And remember, this is the one I stop on uh, since I'm watching the five minute throughout the day. I might change that as well. Um, let's look at, we have this itty bitty one in the one hour. I think it matters. It, I think it could matter. Problem with these itty bitty ones, it's really hard to get that stupid tool to pull it over. You gotta really like zoom in or do this. I guess I could do that. All right, let's pull this sucker over. Put our 15 minute fair value gap template on there. Pull it over a little bit more. Let's mark this one. That's good enough. Um, this one's significant. It stopped our run down here this afternoon when we decided to come back up and chill out which is something we predicted in the futures chat it seemed like that was a balanced price point um, feel free to hang out in futures chat if you want to get my full thought process throughout the day it's not perfect um, but please come in and uh, help me improve, you know. I'm pretty much just journaling my thought process throughout the day. Mainly for me, but also for you guys. And uh, the more people that ju jump in, the better it'll be. So I try to go up into your spy chat every now and then. Join the conversation too, but... It's really difficult for me to keep track of two markets throughout the day. Um, I'm going to mark these out. I mean, I just want to be aware of them, right? <coughs> Not necessarily going to be significant tomorrow, but they might be. And if they are, I want to know about them. Um, I might end there on the 15. Uh, we got some, or sorry, on the gaps at least. We got some targets. I'm going to put some targets out. Uh, previous little day, that's already marked. Um, obviously, this is a, this is a target here. Sell side. Um, you might say this order block. This is another thing that the ICT was talking about today in his video. Um, he marks a lot of the order blocks for targets um, and points that it's gonna you know bounce off of or whatever once it starts trading back in the order block and I mean this these could be order blocks from days ago. Um, it seems pretty accurate. I'm not great at that yet. You know he he'll look at this and say here's the order block now that's probably true like that candle 930 candle is probably what you would call the order block there right um you could also what about this red candle right is that an order block maybe right so i'm not 100 percent on that yet so 
I'm not going to mark those out. Um, but as I get more experience, maybe I will. Uh, we got previous high of day, so that's going to be our major target upwards. Our major target that's on the chart right now, upwards. Um, we have other upward targets, you know, the gap, uh, midpoint of gaps you want to think about too. What I usually do is just do it throughout the day um, to mark midpoints of gaps. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, the five minute, like I said, I sit in that all day. Another thing I might start doing is marking out the five minute gaps because I can lose track of them throughout the day if they're, you know, over this little uh, valley that formed. If they're over here and they're still significant, I'm likely not going to see them if I'm like really hyper focused, but um, just some things to think about and maybe improve upon. Um, I would love to hear your guys' comments on this. Like, where do you think uh, other significant targets would be? Um, definitely trying to improve every day, you know? So that's the whole point of this. Um, hopefully you guys are improving from this process as well. Um, let's help each other out and let's grow. Let's learn. Uh, so I look forward to doing more of these. and. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.